God damn, well, I'm about to calm on myself. She better stop. I was, that's why I threw my hand. But I thought she was going to make me calm. She better stop. <laughs> and she go feel it. Boy, that motherfucker was throbbing and thumping. Press that dick up against her. So you see, y'all, y'all tightening up there. You know how you tighten your booty up so it go in deeper? I got to know I'm fucking. Yeah, I got to, I got to know I'm, I ain't no young boy where we going. I ain't trying to wine and dine now, motherfucker. I want to know, can I fuck afterwards? Now, I ain't gonna ask you that. This I wanna go back to the book. I wanna be treated like the little, I'm sorry, like the little man, but treat me like that too, though. Yeah, yeah, let me take my eye, I let it roll, and I look up under the book. I got my eye, and the girls laugh, and they titties bounce and stuff, and get all and all that. I wanna do that too. Couch Confessions tonight, and we have Charleston White here with us. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Uh, I'm doing well. You're doing well? Yes, ma'am. Good. It's been a little bit since we've had you with us, huh? Yeah, yeah, well. Yeah, I thought y'all didn't want me back. What? Of course <laughs> we wanted you back. I want to come back. Yeah, the last time you were with us, we were on the fan bus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, yeah that's, the, that's the, the couch is with all the, the vitamins and the nutrients in it. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's on the bus. Yeah. Mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah. Um, this is a little bit of a different setup. Yeah. This is more, a pro uh, little bit more professional. Mm -hmm. uh, How do you feel about this new setup? I, I like it. You like it? Yeah. Yeah. It, it seems like uh, we've elevated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We have elevated. So a lot has gone on with you since the last time that we were together. Yeah. yeah a lot, lot of viral moments, a lot of yeah. in the the news, the Instagrams, all yeah. that. Yeah. So I think we can talk about the most recent one. You were just in jail. Yeah, yeah, I was. What happened? Uh, I was assaulted at, at, at a barbershop. And then uh, uh, my response to the assault uh, got me in trouble. So I went and retrieved a, a, a gun uh, to go protect my wife because she was in the building. So uh, the video makes it seem as if I went and got a gun and was chasing after an uh, uh, unarmed man. Mm -hmm. uh, but he had the gun cuffed in his hand, but you can't see that on the video. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so that's the only video that, uh, that was sent to the police department. Mm -hmm. So uh, even though I pressed charges, I got, I got the charges put on me. Okay. Did you know that he had the gun? Yeah, yeah, I seen mm -hmm. it. Uh, Cause I got a puncture wound in my head, from my head right here. And then I got another charge uh, that somebody on the internet uh, said I, that I maced a cat online, but there's no video of it. That uh, you maced a cat online? Yeah, online. Uh, yeah, so uh, they just put that on me too. Uh, cruelty to an animal, macing a cat. Why would they say that about macing uh, the cat? Because I say I hate cats, dogs, people. Uh, yeah, I say all kind of mean shit. Uh, and so uh, the police actually contacted me about that about a year and a half ago, uh, and they asked me about it. And uh, I said, man, that shit ain't real. Man, y'all better stop believing that shit I see on the internet. Uh, and I said, okay, but well, we just want to make sure. I said, yeah. So then a year and a half later, uh, yeah, they put it on me. But the owner of the cat is in the video. Uh, and he's sitting in the car in the video. So when, when the video started circulating around the internet when I was in jail, uh, the owner of the cat saw the video. And so he immediately started calling people saying, that's, that's bullshit, that's, that's bogus. Uh, but what, what didn't happen is, uh, I've become so polarizing on the internet, uh, people really believe I do the shit that I say I do. Right. So like, for for example, uh, in the Cam Newton's interview, uh, he asked me, well, do you slap your wife? I said, no. He said, well, why? I said, you can't tell me I can't slap my wife, but I was talking like I slapped my wife. Mm -hmm. And so people think I slapped my wife. Okay. And in that instance, I literally said, no, I don't do it. Right. But you can't say I can't do it. Right. Uh, so yeah, they get caught up in what I say. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, there was an actual cat though in your video? Nah. So you said the owner of the cat? Yeah. So there wasn't a cat? Uh-uh. Okay. Yeah, so nah. it's just a So there's cat. no cat, there's no mace, there's no no nothing. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just me saying I did it. Okay. Yeah. And this was years ago, you said? Yeah, year and, and a half ago. And they're just now, Yeah. they just now got you for it? Yeah, because uh, I talk too much. Mm -hmm. 
So I said some things on the Cam Newton podcast that uh, uh, upset some high ranking people. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Do you think that the police watches your lives and your interviews and things yeah, like that? They do. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, the FBI said they watch all my videos. They said that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I've been contacted by the FBI for, for things that I've said uh, and, and do on the internet. So I've actually been detained by the FBI for saying, uh, so I got, I got like this little secret compartment where I keep all my guns. Mm -hmm. and, and one day I was pretending like uh, I got some Asian girls in there. So I'm literally in the back saying, ching chong, ching chong, chong. And I got Asian women trapped, bitch, shut up, ho. Fuck now. So I'm doing all this shit online. Later on that day, the FBI stopped me and said that they got a call that I got three Asian women kidnapped in my house. So they didn't come to my house, they went to my mother's house. Mm -hmm. And so they had, to, they had the local police stop me in the hood. So the police stopped me on side the road. The FBI was at my mother's house and said, hey, we got some reports saying that Charleston got some three Asian women kidnapped. My mom was like, what? And they said, we don't want to come in, we know it's not true. My mother said, no, y'all ain't finna come here and tell me no mess like this. Y'all finna come in here and make, you know, because my mother know what could happen with those kind of allegations. Right. So when the FBI finally come on side the road and talk to me, uh, yeah, they told me they get a lot of a lot of calls on me because I say a lot of outlandish shit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so uh, it is what it is. So, since that you know the FBI and the police are watching you, does that make you kind of like think about what you're gonna say no. before you say it? No, not at all. Uh, uh, speech is speech is speech is not violence, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, hate speech is not a criminal. It's not a crime. I can I can I can say hateful things uh, because this still is America. I still have a right to free speech. Mm -hmm. I can't threaten anybody. I can't say I'm going to. I can't threaten. So I don't make threats. I say crazy outlandish uh, shit uh, that I know is going to offend people. And I do that intentionally uh, because this is a soft uh, group of Americans. Uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Right. Actions speak louder than words. So I don't care about the FBI watching me for what I say because my real life actions aren't criminal. Right. Uh, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm, I'm not committing crimes. Uh, I may break the law. I may speed. Uh, I may ride without my seatbelt, but I'm not committing crimes. So right. uh, if, if what I say offend you, turn the channel mm -hmm. because I don't send out invitations to be heard. Right. You have to come find me. You have to type my name in to hear me. So if I offend you, stop listening. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's some people I don't offend at all. They right. love every word I say. Yeah. Yeah. Because they understand actions speak louder than words. Mm -hmm. So I came to the Internet uh, and I said, hey, y'all, don't y'all fall for this character. Don't, and my exact words were, don't fall for this conversation in Mackin. I'm just bullshitting on here, y'all. Uh, I saw this movie called Dolomite in what, 2011, 12, when, when Eddie Murphy recreated the movie Dolomite, put it on Netflix. I grew up believing that Dolomite was a real nigga. I thought Dolomite was a nigga that really act like that. I didn't know until Eddie Murphy put out this movie that Rudy Ray Moe was a guy who was a writer working in a store, was pretending to play Dolomite and created this character. Mm -hmm. And so he started going to the hood, recording and rewriting what hood people would say, go home, put his own spin to it, and put it into this character. So a lot of the elements uh, in, in, in some of the outlandish things that I say is from this character, Dolomite. Mm -hmm. uh, that's who we grew up watching and listening to. Uh, a, a lot of the elements of what you see in my comedy come from Richard Pryor, uh, Red Fox, uh, uh, Robin Harris, uh, uh, P.D. Green, Ma Mabel. So uh, I, I'm a student uh, uh, of this kind of nasty comedy, Andrew Dice Clay. Uh, I'm a student of bitch, too short. You know, uh, so yeah, yeah, nah, man, I'm with the shit. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I come from the university of, hey, we want some pussy. Me and my homies like to play this game. Yeah, we run train on hoes. That's how we learn how to fuck. We ain't learn how to fuck one on one. You get the girl and we all fuck her. That's how we learn how to fuck. We didn't know how to ask for pussy. We just walk in with our dicks out. And if she didn't say no, she getting fucked. So I, I talk like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I, I come from the era where you get a baby a girl. 
The baby used to have, I was in, in I grew up watching kids drink beer in the 80s in America and nobody thought it was wrong. Wow. So uh, I, I, I'm a different kind of man if today time. These motherfuckers soft, they get hurt with words. Right. Yeah, so I'm gonna keep hurting these niggas with words. So okay. if I got to go to jail for these words, uh, I'm gonna keep, I got free speech. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep going to jail for talking. How do you feel about some of the rumors that were going on about you uh, for the reasons why you got locked up? For example, Flacco said- I, 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 that, that wasn't no rumor. I just told Say Cheese TV the same shit last night. That's not a rumor. That's one person lying mm -hmm. who's going to be sued for defamation. Are you talking about Flacco saying that yeah. you were getting freaky with the animal? Yeah. That's why you got... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one person saying that. So right. just think, why wouldn't Vlad and nobody else post that? that, that that's not a rumor. That's a motherfucker lying. Mm -hmm. And you said that you're going to sue for defamation. Goddamn right I'm suing Adam No Jumper 22. Wow. Uh, Soldier Boy Baby Mama has filed a lawsuit against Blueface for saying they fucked before the thing. You can't just make up shit now. Right. And you can't be on a platform as big as uh, that white boy platform with that stuttering nigga on there and, and, and make up shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they making up shit. Uh, but that's that's the hate that he have uh, because he... I, See, these guys been doing podcasts and YouTubes, and, and I come out of nowhere breaking all the rules, doing everything that nobody does, and I still keep going to the top. So uh, one of the main things you, you have to do to, to, to a strong black man like me, uh, and, and this is documented in, in what they call the Willie Lynch the Willie Lynch theory, the Willie Lynch doctrine, is you have to try to assassinate the character of the black man because you can't do nothing else to him. Okay. Yeah, yeah, white people kiss dogs. Black people don't. Yeah, white people let dogs lay in the bed with them. Black people don't. Mm -hmm. White boys are laying in the bed like this with the dog watching TV, spooning the dog. Black people don't. White people let the dog and the cat sit on the table while they eat. Black people don't. So white people are more or less to fuck a dog than a black person would. <laughs> yeah, we'll fuck our cousin before we fuck a dog. Yeah, 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 I don't know what Flacco talking about. That's that white boy shit. He been around Adam too long. Niggas don't even think they'll accuse a nigga of fucking a dog. I, a white woman will let a dog suck her pussy. We seen it on the uh, Orange is the New Black when they started letting the dog go into prison with the girl. The bitch put the peanut butter on her pussy and let the dog lick it and found that it was a sensational experience and she kept doing it. Black people don't think like that. So Flacco lying, I'm gonna sue the shit out that bitch. And I'll keep correcting people who say it's a rumor. It's not a rumor, mm -hmm. it's a lie. Rumors get started when everybody's saying it. It's only one motherfucker saying this. Mm -hmm. Do you think people believed him? No, hell no. You don't see nobody that's reporting it. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah, you don't see nobody that's reporting it. So all of this started because you fell asleep at the barbershop. Uh, no, nah, all of this started years ago. Uh, when, when this guy came home, uh, he, he's a he's a well-known FBI informant, uh, pedophile, killer, gangster, and, and leader of the Four Trade Gangster Crips. So so he's a uh, he's like the King Vaughn of our city, mm -hmm. and everybody's afraid of him. Uh, and he used to be highly respected as as a G in the streets, mm -hmm. uh, but he broke the codes of the streets when the FBI came in and arrested fifty one of these guys. Uh, in this historical drug case called the Fishbowl. And there's actually a book about this guy uh, in, in his whole case. It's called uh, Life in the Fishbowl, written by Tegan Broadwater. So you guys can really look, look this up. So uh, this guy is a notorious killer, uh, sleep, with, sleep with teenage girls, impregnate teenage girls, and if the father say something, he either beat them up or kill them. So everybody is afraid of this guy. So when the FBI came and, and made this, this, this historical drug sweep and drug bust, he arrested all this guy and all of his, 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 his gang. It's like 51 of these guys. He was the main guy who told. And he told on, on everybody he was having commit crimes. So he broke the code. So everybody's hearts were broken. All the G's in the streets, their hearts was broken because he broke the code. Uh... And nobody would say anything. Nobody would call him a snitch. So when I started coming to the community and I started changing my narrative of how I spoke on the Internet uh, as far as delivering my message, when I would get into it with guys on the Internet, I would say things like, yeah, you bitch ass nigga playing like y'all tough, but y'all won't say nothing about such and such. 
and he snitched. Y'all still hug him. Uh, and so the streets, I started shaming the streets. So why are y'all still trying to get these kids to hold on to these codes when y'all not holding on to these codes? The mafia is not holding on to these codes. Sammy Bull didn't hold on to these codes. The codes of snitching, right? Yeah. Right. So here it is. So y'all y'all not shaming this guy? Nobody's going to shame him? And he's been home out of prison for about five or six years now. And I've been the only one calling him a snitch. Publicly. Won't nobody do this. They're terrified. Of it because he told them when he come back to this city, can't nobody whoop me. So no one would dare say the things to him that I said. So this is his second time trying to attack me. So I, I, I spoke about this two or three years ago in an interview when I said, oh, I ran into a killer. Me and him ran into each other one night at a club. And he tried to say you, you, what I can't say. No, nah, you can't tell me what I can't say. Mm -hmm. So all of this is about me, what I can't say. I can't call him a snitch. Mm -hmm. So I was attacked because he said, I can't call him a snitch. Keep my name out your mouth. Don't call me. no. But you snitch, my nigga. You broke the rules and you was you a street nigga. You a G, you a killer. So, yeah. So uh, I'm trying to show children that all of this shit is bullshit. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so uh, y'all, all, all this is about free speech. So how did he know you were at that barber shop? Uh, uh, the barber, the barber. Uh, I, I had went live, right? The barber called me up there to bring some merchandise. Mm -hmm. Uh, to bring some of my bring bring some of my merchandise. Uh. And so that's how he knew. Okay. And when he hit you, he kind of like missed. He didn't get like no, no. The well, 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 he he had he had a gun in his hand. So his hands real big. He like six four, two hundred and forty something pounds. He a big nigga. Uh, I weigh one nineteen. So if he he tried to hit me with the butt, I'm sleep like this. So he hits up like this. So he didn't miss. He hit up to hit the butt. So you can right. see the puncture wound. Right. Uh, that's why it's on a small clip. Of that video. Mm -hmm. If they show the whole video, they'll show him walking in with the gun in his hand. Okay. One of the witnesses, I, I can't see this because I'm asleep. One of the witnesses said he handed a gun to another guy and the guy put the gun in his right back pocket. So that's why they won't show, they're only showing that one part of that video. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I see. That's why they won't show it. It's a whole video. It's a whole video to that. Do you think they'll release it because of. No, nah, if they the release charges? that, he'll go to prison for felony possession of a firearm. And all my charges will be dropped. So you, why wouldn't they release it? Uh, I don't know. They're on his side then. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know. Okay. When you stood up afterward, did you stand on business? Uh, I don't know. I, I was dazed. Oh, you were uh, dazed. So um, imagine being dead sleep. Boom! You dazed. <laughs> you can't see nothing. Uh, if you have, if you have a fault. Punches, you you, you got to recover from punches. Mm -hmm. So it probably takes 45 seconds to a, a minute to recover from a good punch. Mm -hmm. If you think about his body size and my body size, uh, it took me about three minutes to gain my vision because I'm legally, I'm visually impaired. I only got one eye. Okay. Uh, and he hit me on the side. Or, um, so it took me a while. I didn't even know who hit me. I didn't even know who was standing in front of me. Mm -hmm. All I hear, rrr, 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 rrr. so I got I'm trying to come too before I take another blow. And then did you find out who it was in that moment or uh, not until afterward? Oh, uh, well, I found out because my vision started coming to me eventually. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So you only days. That's why that's why fighters can boom, boom and, and be days and can recover. Because if you fight, you can you can recover. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't the only time that things got heated, because recently at your com uh, comedy show, you got into an altercation as well. No, I, I attacked the guy. I didn't get into an altercation. Okay. I attacked, so you attacked the guy. Him. Yeah, I attacked the guy. With flowers first, and then it was the mic. Yeah, that 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 was a skit. Yeah, that that was staged. It was staged. That's why I didn't have no bruises, no bumps, no nothing. Wow. Okay, I didn't know it was staged. Uh, everything I do on the internet is staged. Mm -hmm. So you had the guy yelling, and you told him to do that beforehand. Uh, I ain't saying what I did. But just know uh, it was staged. Okay. Okay. Do you think that people would be shocked if they knew that was staged? Because it looked really real. Uh, a lot of people... Like, well, well, hold on. If you go look at it, what makes you think it's real? When I go immediately after the show with not one mark, not a scratch, no wrinkles on my shirt or nothing. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the video, you see as soon as I go to the ground, I immediately get right up. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if it's really real, why ain't nobody running no victory laps? Because people want clout. Think about this. People really want clout. 
Why you don't see nobody say, I'm the one got him. I whooped this motherfucker. Because that's what they would be doing. Very true. Ask yourself that. He, they're not, who, nobody's running a victory lap but me. I got the back end money. Look at me. I ain't got no brood in no, ah, nah, 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 boo boo, you bitch. I'm the only one running the victory lap. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easy to play on people. This, this, this group of humans who are looking at their phone, uh, this is the dumbest group of people because they believe everything they see. Right. They believe everything they hear. You're only supposed to believe half of what you see and half of what you hear, then look for facts by doing research. This group don't research. Right. So whatever I say that I can do in front of the camera, I can make y'all believe it. I shot myself. No, I didn't shoot myself. I shot myself in the leg. I didn't shoot myself. I just keep changing the mm -hmm. stories. Especially when like news articles, they pick it up so quickly. Oh, uh, well, it's not news article. It's bloggers. Bloggers okay. aren't credible people. The news have to be somewhat credible. Mm -hmm. So a news journalist have to have some type of source of information and it has to be credible and sometimes they have to cite their source mm -hmm. unless it's an individual. But bloggers don't. They can just repost. Yeah, or just make up some shit. Right. Yeah, I make up shit all the time. I will say you do know your facts. Like you've definitely researched, you've definitely read. Yeah. You I like, went to college. They teach you that at the university level of college when you're writing papers. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and one thing you learn in college is uh, Google is not a source of reference. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Wikipedia is not a credible source of reference. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to go get a credible source of information. Uh, what's a credible source of information? A police report. A police report. So think about this. The Internet says I'm 52, 53 years old and they stand on that. But just yesterday, when they released my police record, it says I was born in 1977. So how can I be 52? But the Internet said he's 52. But they look at the, the jail record says it's all it's 1977. Why do you think they say 52? That's so. Oh, uh, because be, because we live in an information age. Right. And, and this is the most dangerous time to 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 be living uh, with so much information out there. So this is what the world has done to. Public school people. Uh, uh, I don't want to call us dumb, but uh, we're dumber than the one percent of people, right? So all of us at the bottom, we're pretty dumb compared to the people at top. We're stupid, lack of knowledge. So they give us all this information. So it's just matter this table being full of pieces of puzzles. Okay, this might be true. This may be false, but it's information, and we think because it's information, it's true. Google, tell me how old Charleston is. 53, because you have access to information. We live in an information age. So how do you know if it's true or not? What research have you done? Well, you don't know how to research. You learn how to research in school. So we argue over what Google is telling us, and Google is one of the most inaccurate places to draw information from in this information age. We don't read books. We don't read the newspaper. We don't read magazines. We don't read the sources. We don't read encyclopedias. That's where all the credible information is. We're getting it offline and anybody can put anything online. So this is what happens, right? Charleston, tell me something about Google. So Google is gonna give you uh, my wife because we're married. It's gonna cross reference our information. My wife is 53. So it's gonna cross reference us by way of a marriage certificate. And it's going to give her age, it's going to give my age, and so it's going to give you all these different ages. And so most people just pick the first, the first page. And, and so what I learned in, in college, if you Google something and use the Internet for information, the first two pages are inaccurate because people pay to have that information put on the first pages in the Google searches. You can pay to have. So you have to typically go to the third or fourth page to find out who Charleston White really is. That's where you're going to see. Uh, me on the front page of the American Bar Association Journal. That's where you're going to see me doing human trafficking presentation with Texas Western University. That's where you're going to see me doing all these different things uh, with, with, with politicians. You won't see that on the first or second page. You're going to see a bunch of YouTube shit. Right. Uh, and so if you understand the search engines, uh, that's the first step in, in research and accurate information. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I did see on the first page of Google and a lot of other places was you recently did an interview and you took out one of your eyes. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Was that the first thing that was that the first time that you had 
done that uh -uh. publicly? Uh-uh. The no. first time I ever did it was on Queen's Flip when the world first met me. Mm -hmm. Yes. So so and, and so I do it all the time. So I do it on my lives all the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, but just think about this. Uh, out of all the things that I've done, uh, that's the first thing they put on all the pages. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 the push down who Charleston White really is. Uh, and you get stuck on the eye. Mm -hmm. And you never think, well, man, you really worked on capital murder cases. You really worked on juvenile life. So people get caught up into the bullshit. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wake up with the bullshit. Because that's what they want, the bullshit. Mm -hmm. And that's why I keep uh, conquering the internet. Because people want bullshit. Right. And I know how to get bullshit. I'm a bullshit nigga, boy. I ain't bullshit. Um, another live that I saw that you did, you were shooting your shot at Cardi B. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, I think she, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to go on a metaverse date with her. Yeah, you said you wanted to go on a metaverse date with her and have a three hour long conversation, which yeah. is very specific. Yeah. What did you want to talk about in three hours? Uh, I'm going to be trying to fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to be trying to fuck. So I'm going to be doing what I like to call interrogating. Mm -hmm. Uh, the best way to fuck a woman is to take her to an interrogation room uh, like the police do. Uh, you capture her life story by way of, of in interrogating questions. Mm -hmm. So what kind of questions would uh, you ask her? Are you the youngest or are you the oldest child? They let me know kind of, uh, they kind of let me know where, where, where you think you fit into the place of uh, uh, life, right? So uh, if you're the only child, uh, I I'm gonna assume that you're spoiled uh, you're entitled. Uh, you kind of like the family's mascot. You're the prize and joy. Uh, so that means everybody go be in your business. Who's the new guy you met? So my approach would be different. Uh, I'm gonna ask you: Was you raised by your mother and your father? So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start from your life story. Was, okay. you, was you was you, you raised your mother and father? You say it was just my mom. If you say both, I'm gonna say which one was you close to? Was you a daddy's girl, mama's girl? Uh, were you popular in school? What was your favorite subject? See, I'm, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm a different kind of guy, uh, because asking these type of questions uh, tells you everything about a person. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing who they are, where they come from, how they was raised, uh, you know, were you popular in school? Did you get along with everybody? So these type of questions, even in an in interrogation room, uh, is is gonna show uh, weaknesses, strengths, flaws. Uh, all type of shit. And this is just casual conversation. This ain't even trying to fuck on you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm setting you up later to fuck on you just by these interrogating questions. Mm -hmm. So that's the first things that you would ask Cardi B out of everything that yeah. you could ask her. Yeah, but because because I don't want to know I don't want to know nothing else about outside of but who she is. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna miss her asking anything else other than about her. Mm -hmm. So the focus would be her. Do you think that you would be able to fuck her better than Offset did? Uh, no, nah, hell no. Nah. Uh, uh, sh sh she's emotionally invested into him, so you can't fuck her better than him. Right. Because uh, there's no substance when y'all fuck. Mm -hmm. Uh, they got feelings involved, so right. it's 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 sublime for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know. Nah. But you would try. No. Nah. Uh, oh, you see, no. Nah, uh, uh. I don't suck pussy, and I don't eat ass, and I don't tongue kiss. So I can't out fuck none of them niggas. Yeah, I, don't, I ain't no tongue kissing nigga. I ain't putting no hickeys on your neck. I may bite, I may kiss a nipple. Uh, I'm a, I fuck. I slang dick. I ain't yeah. I ain't switching too many positions. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm like a nigga that just did grades. That's so all he do is did grades. Yeah, yeah. So now nah, I can't have fuck these mm -hmm. niggas. I just fuck good like the government. You're just gonna get fucked. What would you say that your biggest flex in the bedroom is? Uh. I know how to cheat. Yeah, I know how to cheat in that motherfucker. Yeah, now nah, I know how to get the edge. Yeah, yeah, I know how to get the edge. Okay, that's your biggest flex? Yeah, that's my biggest flex. Like that Energizer Bunny. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you too commercial down. Here come this motherfucker in the Pillsbury Doughboy beating on the drum. You thought the commercial was over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Speaking of cheating, you were on live and a fan asked if you still cheat on your wife. That wasn't no fan. That was some old hateful hearted motherfucker being nosy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. They asked that shit while my wife was sitting in the car. Sitting in the car, yeah. yeah. But she started laughing, so she well, didn't she, take it too serious. Uh, well, she know she know who she married. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Coretta Scott King knew what Dr. King was doing. We just didn't. 
uh, your woman know you. And if y'all stay together long enough, she know you better than you know you. Mm-hmm. You stay you stay longer with her, she begins to know you like your mother knows you. Mm-hmm. She knows so she know what she married. Uh, she just a she just a she's an honorable woman. Uh, that know how to maintain her grace and dignity, uh, even though her nigga ain't shit, her man ain't nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Coretta Scott King did the same thing. Uh, if for nothing else, I love and respect my wife and I cherish her for the fact that as as wrong as I am as a husband, she always highlights the good as I am for as her man. So she don't bash me by being, you know, uh, she pray about it. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She still yeah, the 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 love uh, that she's able to still display and distribute. Uh, even though, yeah, that that that's that's see, most people think that's a weakness, that's a strength yeah, that agree. many can cannot tap into. So, do you think because she has that strength, that would make you want to stop cheating? No, uh, whatever a woman has has nothing to do with a man's dick. So, a, a man don't cheat because the woman. It ain't nothing a woman does or don't do that causes a man to cheat. A man cheat because it's in his nature to do it. He's really like a dog. Seriously. Mm-hmm. Uh, only in the Western world. Cheating is a European concept. So, right? So all of us was born in America with white people minds. The queen just want one man. So, so all of these American women have a concept of being a queen. Well, a queen is a selfish bitch. Y'all didn't know about Queen Elizabeth and every other queen? She's a selfish bitch. Her man sits over there and she dictates to everybody. He's the weak motherfucker. He can't come and say, hey, baby, I'm king. You sit your ass down. Are you no longer. She runs the kingdom as queen. If she was a real queen type woman and she wasn't no bitch, she'll step down and let king run. So you have this Western concept that a man is supposed to be with one woman and we're supposed to get married at 18, 19, 20 years old. And we're supposed to stay in your pussy till we 70. Just your pussy. But God gave me a nature. God gave me a, a chromosomes and, and a designs that makes me not be able to do that. Because my whole drive is about sex. My whole energy level is my testosterone, my my. My chemicals in my body is geared for sex because I'm supposed to populate this earth. I get you pregnant. It take me nine months for to have your baby. How can I populate the earth when I got to wait nine months? Okay. I can go populate this whole earth while you give another baby. <laughs> so that's why when you read history and you study history and you understand history, every great man before us had 300 wives and 200 concubines. Well, what's concubine? Holes on the side, side bitches. Really? Yeah. In every other country, in every other country on earth, no other man is shamed for having multiple women except in Europe and in America. This is a European Western concept for a man to be with one woman. So how do you feel if it's flipped? How do you feel about women cheating on their man or it, having a it, side it, dude? It is flipped. Women do it all the time. Mm-hmm. We just can't catch them. Because a, a woman can run further with her skirt up than we can run with our pants down. We got to pull our pants down to fuck. So when our pants around our leg, we trying to run, we go trip and fall. She can raise us up. She can, somebody can ring the doorbell, ding dong, and you and your woman can be laying in the bed. And she say, baby, I, I think that's the, let me, I got a package coming. It can be a nigga at the door. She can stand there and hold her dress up and let him fuck right quick and come back and lay in the bed and you'll never know. Women are more sneaky. Women are more conniving than men because men are creatures of habit, so we can't really be sneaky. Mm -hmm. It's too easy to detect what a man does because he's a creature in his pattern of behavior. Women are more Mm snake-like. They play like they ain't whole, but they are hoes. They play like they don't want to be whole, but they got a whole nature. Most women try to suppress the whole nature and sneak into it. The, The man can't suppress his nature. That's why when some fine walk by, as hard as he try not to look, he got to. He can't suppress his nature. So 
the woman queen, she's selfish. Mm -hmm. She want him sitting right there while she running the whole kingdom. And she want to be able to see him. He can't go out into the kingdom in the village. So it is flipped. Women just don't want us to know it's flipped, but it is. But how do you feel about it being flipped? I, I don't worry about what a woman do with her pussy. Okay. I don't have a problem with my woman lying to me if she can tell me a lie and make me believe it. I'm not going to question no lie and it sound good. Mm -hmm. Women question the truth and it's the truth, mm -hmm. let alone a lie. Women want to know what a man is doing with his dick when she's not, because she's worried about this is her only concern. For the most part, this is her only value. Right. She can't cook. She can't sew. She can't balance a budget. She can't, she can't control the deficit of the household to make sure the credit good. So her only value is calming and making you calm. So she has to wonder where your dick is going because that other woman might could cook over there. That other woman might get your credit clean with that good dick. I just can make you come. I can suck this. So that's her only value. Mm -hmm. So most women worry about a nigga with what he's doing with his dick, but they're not worried about being better women. They're going through his phone, but they're not, they're not researching no goals. Right. They don't have any aspirations other than where you being, what you doing. Right. Well, why ain't no pictures hung up on the wall? Why, why you ain't done nothing in this house? Why you ain't advanced our lives? Why you so worried? So that's the biggest problem that people have in relationship. Mm -hmm. Worrying about dick and pussy. We never create no business concepts. We be in relationship five, six years and never write down one business plan, but we going through each other's social media platform. And that take, that takes a lot to do. Right. So uh, I don't worry about what my wife do with her pussy. I just make sure it ain't too wide open when I get in. Make sure it ain't too dry. So I'm fucking that pussy long as it's wet and it don't never dry out, then shit, I ain't worried about nothing. I'm fucking that pussy and I ain't got to worry about catching no STD. I ain't worried about nothing. Mm -hmm. Keep lying to me and make me believe it. So when Cassie recently filed a lawsuit against Diddy, in one of the statements, she talked about her and Diddy would do something that he called a freak off. A freak off was when Diddy would watch Cassie have relations or hook up with another guy in front of him. I done been to some fuck parties like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I done been, yeah. It's, it's, it's just like when the football team. Mm -hmm. The homeboy, we get together. I was just talking about trains. We, we were raised to do this. How would At, you feel about your girl doing it in front of you? Uh, well, uh, that ain't my girl after that. But that's how we used to test our girls, though. Really? You guys would test your girls uh, like that? Man, 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 growing up, this is how you knew which girl was your girlfriend. Hey, call and see if we can fuck her. That's how we knew how girl that as far back as elementary school, when we liked a girl and all of our homeboys know we like her, you bring her over here to try to see if we all can fuck her. And if we can't fuck her, then just my girl. That's how we tried and tested girls back then. Because usually she's gonna fuck. Mm -hmm. Usually they're gonna fuck. Really? Very, very few say no. Really? Yeah, really. Yeah, hoes want to be fucked too. Girl want to be fucked by multiple guys too. Especially if just uh, in crowd guys. That's why they hang around rappers. That's why they hang. Well, hey, man, you ain't, man, yeah, they want it. So uh, that's how you know. Have you ever been hurt by a girl uh, doing that uh -uh. with your friends? Uh-uh. I, I got locked up in, in eighth grade at 14 years old. So uh, I ain't never had my heart broken. Never? Uh-uh. Uh but I believe in love. Uh, I ain't one of those guys that think all oh, these hoes ain't loyal. Uh, I know a hoe would be loyal to me, a woman or whatever. Uh, I don't look at women and, and, and place uh, my value on them. I know I'm a hell of a nigga, so the value placed on me. So I know she might not done it for you, nigga, but she'll do it for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she might not. Yeah, so I, that's my mindset. But I got locked up at such an early age in life. Uh, I came home when I was grown. Right. So when I came home at 21, uh, emotionally and mentally, I was still 14. Right. So I wasn't with my age group. So I had to grow up. So because I got locked up at such an early age and I had to emotionally detach from my mother because I'm a kid, that I'm a mama's boy, a nigga that was nurtured. So to have to go away at 14 and go off into a system, uh, I, had to, I had to learn how to emotionally detach. Right. Uh, and so I, I don't allow myself to get hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, if I find myself uh, falling for a person, uh, where I know it could hurt, uh, I emotionally detach. Right. 
Yeah, because I would hate to be 46, 47 years old, and I've never had my heart broke, and I experienced heartbreak at 46 years old. What if I can't bounce back? Because I've seen many men uh, fall in life. I've seen men get hooked on drugs, get their life back together. Seen guys fall out behind drinking, get their life back together, go to prison, get out, get their life. But I done seen niggas fall out behind a woman and get their heart broke and be fucked up forever. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of guys can handle seeing their woman with another guy. No, they can't. Who told you that? Well, like, for example, Adam 22 and none of the plug, they just did That's a, a perversion. That's, that's, that's not normal. I promise you that's not normal. No man, no, no normal man can sit there and watch no motherfucker fucking his woman and she's enjoying it. That's, well, that's he, a sickness. He, um, he hooked up with Lena, his wife, with another guy. Uh, that's a sickness. Uh, no, no man, not your woman, woman. Uh, no man would do that. that that's, a, that's a perversion. It, it, that, that's, not a, that's not a logical way of a man thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, to watch, because this is, man, you in her body. You can't get no more intimate than going inside of a woman's body and you're watching her enjoy the pleasure. You got to be sick for that to pleasure you. I don't love no woman or nothing that enough to put myself through that kind of shit. What, man, how can you get off to that? Unless you, man, no, man, hell no. Mm -hmm. Hell no, man. Yes. And they, they doing it with no condoms. And, nah, man, ain't no need for to put that raw dick in my baby. And I sit there and look at, they man shit, no. And I ain't, no, man, no, hell no. And no, and I ain't for to fuck no motherfucker in her husband right there looking. What kind of sick shit is that? Yeah, that's that white boy shit. Man, please. A well, nigga, Diddy, Diddy's not white, and he uh, apparently likes it's, that. It's, it's a sickness. I keep telling you, a, a normal guy is not going to do that. Right. A normal guy cannot even stand the thought of a motherfucker fucking his woman. You can't, you can't stomach that as a normal guy. Uh, yeah, you got to be sick. And, and, and I, they're sick, and, and it's been proven. Right. Oh, uh, yeah, it's been proven. Last time you were on the bus, I asked you a question. I asked you, would you rather have five days with Ruby Rose or dinner with Jay-Z? Five days with Ruby Rose, I'm gonna make a baby. That yeah, is, yeah, I'm gonna make a motherfucking baby. So that's baby. Your, still your answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I probably try to learn how to eat pussy in them five days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I go to Pussy Eating University. I wanna ask you, take me through each day with Ruby Rose, what uh, you would do. You can't plan that. Uh, Man, you 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 can't. Uh, it just gotta happen. Okay. So you. Oh, uh, the you vibe, have... man. I just want to talk. Mm -hmm. The best way to get into a woman's bed is in her head. Less in her bed and more in her head. How you get in her head? Conversating, asking mm -hmm. questions. Because women want the attention of, hey, man. Well, what was it like? Was they talk about you in school? So she want to talk about the girls she didn't like in high school. She can talk for hours. You just gotta listen and take notes. Are you ever interested in what the girl's saying, or are you just kind of yeah, like I mean, doing yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I'm not just talking to be talking. I want to know. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking you questions. Just I want to know. So if I'm interested in you, I want to know about you. Right. I don't want your pussy. Anybody can get that. Mm -hmm. I want in your head. Because once I get in that pussy, oh, it's going to be hard for me to get out that head because I'm in that head before I got in that pussy. So you want to get in the head first and say the bed last. That's if you like her. If you don't like her, try to fuck her. But I tell our young boy, man, if you really like a girl, don't try to fuck her. Right. Make that be the last thing you try to do. I think that's good advice. Yeah, it is. Um, Ruby Rose has a fan, um, some would say a fan that's a little bit extreme. He spent $62,000 on her on OnlyFans and got her face tatted on him. Did you hear about that? How do you feel about that? Yeah. Uh, his mama should disown him. Uh, yeah, it, everybody that know him should, should shame him. Mm -hmm. Make him feel horrible. Uh, push him to the brink of jumping off a cliff. Uh, why would you do that? Unless he's a multi-millionaire dude. Uh, he might be one of them uh, Silicon Tech Valley geeks. Uh, you can go buy a bitch for 60 something thousand dollars. Yeah, I go get me one of them tier one uh, uh, mail order brides. Could save half of that. 
a Russian male or the bride, a Ukrainian male. I mean, he could have bought a wife. Yeah, yeah, I would have yeah, bought. Or oh, he could have got one of them bad ass blow up dogs. But I ain't finna spend 60 something thousand dollars on no woman. And man, she ain't even gonna consider giving me nothing. A consideration? Well, how about a tattoo? Would you ever get a tattoo of a woman? No. The name? No, anything? no. No. Uh, no woman is worthy to put her motherfucking name on me. Mm -hmm. Except my daughter. That's a good answer. Yeah, ain't there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, nah, man. Except, no, nah, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mama and my daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I can't see putting no woman name on me. I believe he even went on No Jumper and said that the picture and everything was was kind of planned. He didn't really spend that money on her. But um, So why are they telling us he did then? They lying. Well, she did have text messages as proof, but I don't. she never responded to him saying that. On oh, he done no fucked jumper. then. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm glad. Yeah, he done fucked. Yeah, she done gave him some pussy. Ruby selling pussy then. If they got text messages of each other and he done spend that kind of money, yeah, man, they done, yeah, he done done something. In the, in the messages, she had never responded for what she showed. But some people were wondering how did he get her number in the first place? She. Uh, what do Ruby Rose do, by the way? She's um, a content creator, a model, OnlyFans model. I think she makes music as well. Yeah, she's selling pussy too. I buy some on Ruby, but I ain't spend no motherfucking sixty something thousand dollar. I got to be fucking off the back before you get that sixty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them sixty come in payments, you know. Uh, February rent, May rent, but you don't just yeah. But we got to be fucking in between them, yeah, them payments. What kind of sex is the best? I miss you sex, makeup sex, or we aren't supposed to be doing this sex? Uh, that sex after y'all fight. So that fighting sex. that fighting and fucking now nah, it's, it's now nah, that ain't makeup sex is y'all that had a good argument, you know, over some now nah, that 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 fighting kind of sex. Uh where y'all done talked about each other mamas. Uh uh yeah, <laughs> this ain't your baby, motherfucker. Bitch, I know it ain't my hoe, that kind of shit. Uh, where well, y'all done broke a lamp. She done threw some shit at you. She done ran into your car. And then y'all done went two weeks without seeing each other. And then y'all run back into each other and fuck just to fight again. That's the best sex. That's all y'all do is fucking fight. That's the best sex you can have. In Why the is shit. that the best? I don't opinion? know because that's normally that's the all the pleasure y'all have in the in the relationship. Normally that's the only pleasure that y'all have. That's two motherfuckers that shouldn't be together but just got together because the sex was good. Mm -hmm. And they so invested into each other, uh, it's hard to part ways, but the sex is good. Mm -hmm. So they keep you tied to this motherfucker, wasting time, just having good sex in common. Mm -hmm. So the compensation be the orgasms and the nuts that you have. Only when you're laying there next to that motherfucker to be trying to think about how to run. So to me, uh, that fighting and fucking sex is the best. It's the best. Yeah. So like, kind of like a toxic vibe. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to talk about Brittany. And paid for a pussy. Oh. Your yeah, paid for a pussy might be the best. Yeah, that bought pussy. Yeah, a woman who getting some a woman, a woman that getting some money for sucking your dick, suck dick way better than a woman who love you. Really? A woman who rents you paying, she fuck way better than a motherfucker that love you. Why? I swear to God. Why do you think that? Because she getting the reward. What are you talking about? She getting a doggy treat. <laughs> Dog draw all kind of thing for them treats when you keep getting them treats. <laughs> yeah, so keep treating. That's why they call trick or treat. Yeah, keep tricking for them treats. Mm -hmm. That's the fair exchange of it. Uh, your woman, your woman, once y'all get together out of love, uh, she don't really give a damn about pleasing you the way you really want to be pleased. That's why you got to go pick up the phone and go watch your favorite porn video. Mm -hmm. You want some new pussy. Ain't nothing better than new pussy, not even the makeup sex. Mm -hmm. Have you paid for pussy before? Yes, I have. What's the most that you've ever spent? Uh, uh, at one time, maybe three, four hundred dollars. Uh, over time, maybe a year rent. A what? A year's worth of rent. A year's worth of rent. Yeah. Got it. You know, you that's take care of your little bitch, you fucking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's what mama say. Yeah, you supposed to take care of your mama, you fucking. So, how about your wife, do you take care of her like you would take care of like a girl that you're paying to fuck? Uh, me and the wife go half on the bill together. Uh, oh, yeah, really? we, we're in a partnership in the business. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'm tricking over here, so now. Okay. Yeah, this is irresponsible over here. This is responsible over here. Me and the wife are responsible over here. I'm over here being irresponsible, compensating for my wrongdoings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just compensating for my wrongdoings. So this ain't about, yeah, yeah, I'm just, you know, it's a benefit to fuck with me. And if I'm over here fucking with you, it's a benefit, you know, yeah, it's supposed to be an even exchange. Mm -hmm. So in, in the process of me just fucking on you, I'm gonna ask you, man, what you, what you wanna do? You, you, in the, put, you wanna go to real estate school? I'll put you in real estate school. Mm -hmm. uh, you want your titties done? Uh, it's a benefit. So you ain't just gonna be fucking on you and you can't get nothing out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the same time, when I go home to my wife, I'm gonna feel guilty and do what Kobe Bryant do, buy one of them big ass rings, buy a new car. So my granddaddy said you're supposed to have a wife and a girlfriend. It'll make you treat your wife better out of guilt and shame. So when you're going home from the other woman, how you feeling so shame and guilty, you trying to think of all the good things to come home and do for your wife. So you come in with roses. Hey, baby, I got you some roses. Look, baby, I got you these motherfucking bouquet of flowers. It's made out of money. So you go do all you trying to think of. Kobe came with a $6 million ring when he got caught. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just the nature of a man. Mm -hmm. And I'm a man in every aspect that I try to be. I, no, trust me, I can tell that you're a man. <laughs> you get the energy. Not long after we had you on the fan bus, we had Brittany Renner. Yeah, 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 my partner. Mm -hmm. So, um, you guys look like you had some fun when you were on a podcast together. Yeah, we did. Uh, we had so much fun, uh, we can't even show the clips after the podcast. So it's a lot of it's a lot of scenes on, on the Danza Project uh, that we, we can't show. Uh, my wife probably leave me. And then my, yeah, yeah, I'd be in trouble. Well, one clip that we did see was that she gave you a lap dance. Yeah, she, boy, had a nigga dick. I, I, he asked me not to cuss so much. Yeah, had me aroused in, 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 with an erection. What were you thinking in that moment? She fit a bust a vein in this motherfucker. That motherfucker hard in the bitch. God damn, boy, I'm about to calm on myself. She better stop. I was, that's why I threw my hand. But I thought she was make me calm. She better stop. <laughs> and she go feel it. Boy, that motherfucker was throbbing and thumping. And she would put that motherfucking warm. Oh man, <laughs> I'm about to come. I'm thinking about it. Uh, you could feel all that through your pants. What man? I would, I would, I would tighten up my booty cheeks, <laughs> press that dick up against her. So you see, y'all, y'all tightening up there. You know how you tighten your booty up so it go in deeper. Y'all had them up so she can feel it. That was yeah, hell yeah, I can feel it. So after that night that you guys were on the podcast, what happened? Anything? Oh, uh, we went out afterwards. Where'd you guys go? Uh, we went to uh, one of y'all local famous strip clubs. Well, okay. I won't say the name. Okay. Uh, and boy, we had fun. And yeah, we had fun. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my guy, my guy, at one point in time said, "Yo, hey, yo, get an Uber, yo, 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 man, there's people here looking." Boy, we were making that. Man, listen, Bob, Bob, man, I'm really in love with Brittany. You said uh, you were making out. Yeah, we made out. Publicly and people, you know, but it took people a while to realize, man, when they realized, uh, yeah, my man Shannon Bridge, yo, champ, yo, yo, you got to get a room, champ, get an Uber, get out of here. You're in public, people watching. Uh, man, we just having fun, you mm -hmm. know, yeah, we just having fun. Was she a good kisser? Oh, uh, yeah, she, yeah. Okay, and did you get a room after? Uh, uh, I wanted to be a perfect gentleman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to be a perfect gentleman. Uh, we had been drinking. Uh, probably, you know, in, a little intoxicated. Uh, and I ain't, yeah, yeah, nah, uh, I made sure she got home safely. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, I was a perfect gentleman. You are a perfect gentleman, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I was a perfect gentleman. Uh, when she was in the back seat laying down resting, I didn't reach back there and try to touch her pussy because I knew she was drunk. So I wanted that fish to be live and squirming when I got to touching on it. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, we got to that motherfucking club. She got up and got to live and squirming. And we had fun. And there was some more girls in there uh, who was just in there hanging out, chilling, got to hang out with her. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, nah, we was acting like normal people that night. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you guys would ever have a round two? Uh, yeah, 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 I, I think we will. Uh, 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 our, our energy, uh, we, we connect. Uh, yeah, we vibe. We vibe mm -hmm. together. She has yeah, really yeah. good energy. Yeah, yeah, she, she, we, we vibe together. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We like two magnets. Yeah, we like two magnets. Okay. Yeah, we looking get in the forward same room. to, yeah, I'm looking yeah, forward well, to seeing uh, more of you Yeah, guys. I, I had, uh, uh, I, I hit her up uh, a few weeks ago uh, because I know we make, we, we can do good content together. Right. So uh, ultimately, uh, uh, it, it's a good collaboration, a, a good 
a good partnership that that can become a good business partnership to be content creators or right. uh, even if that's just doing a podcast uh, uh our personalities kind of complement one another uh uh she don't hold back i don't hold back uh and and we kind of agree on a lot of things mm-hmm. uh so yeah we have more more in common i think mm-hmm. uh so we'll be the best of friends i love that yeah speaking of you being a gentleman I'm sure you go, I'm sure you take women on nice first dates. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. You don't? Uh-uh. I don't go on dates. You don't? I got to know I'm fucking. Yeah, I got to, I got to know I'm, I ain't no young boy where we go on. I ain't trying to blind and die now, motherfucker. I want to know, can I fuck afterwards? Mm-hmm. Now, I ain't going to ask you that, but I, ha- I got to get some kind of inkling. Uh, so I don't go on dates. Uh, I ain't planning no date with no woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can go out to eat. So we you don't consider that a date? No, nah, no, nah, nah, we can go out to eat now. Nah. Uh, uh, you would, you would take a homeless person and go get something to eat. You don't even know them. So, uh, nah, man, feed feeding a woman is 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 that's that's courtesy. Uh, but a date, mm-hmm. man, I got to know we fucking. Mm-hmm. So how do you know that if you don't take her? Uh, date? well, we go talk. Because I know you're going to talk and you're going to, you know. Well, you can ask questions without directly asking questions to get an answer that you're looking for. So how would you ask a girl, are we going to fuck without saying that? Uh, well, it's go- it might take two weeks to ask that. Are you sleeping with anybody? You know, I know, you know, so so at some point a guy gets to, he gets comfortable with us to ask, well, well I know you got some nigga hitting that pussy. You know, I know somebody. So she might be comfortable and say, well, yeah, I got a friend. Well, my question was, when last time, you know, y'all done had sex? I don't mean to get in your business. Well, it's been a while. Okay, well, what's a while? So you want to get away from that topic of sex. Mm-hmm. At some point, you come back to it. Okay. Now you say, how long has it been since you been? So I, you ain't got no toys or nothing. So you're asking questions without trying to seem so uh, invasive. Mm-hmm. So you have to, you, have, you, you got to think to talk to women, homie, to ask questions. So because women do it to us, when they want to know an answer, they done already came up with questions to get this answer without directly asking you, are you doing it, right? So they're sitting back thinking how to do this. Uh, Me and my uncle say, while you fucking a woman, she thinking. So nigga, you got to be thinking too. So as I'm talking to you, I am I already know, bitch, you fucking somebody. And I ain't gonna say this to you, but I'm saying, man, this whole fucking somebody. But I'm gonna act like you're not. So I'm gonna play dumb and go along and ask these questions. Mm-hmm. But I know what I'm looking for. So in the process of us communicating, talking on the phone, I can tell if you're sexually attracted to me, right? So when we go to when we go eat, you hungry, I bring you lunch at your job. I might touch your leg, I might touch your ass, I might touch some part of your body to see your response to me. Mm-hmm. Well, as we're communicating, my grandmother say if a woman like it, she'll touch your arm, she'll touch your chest. Put a hand on your thigh. So I'm looking for those points as we're communicating mm-hmm. because ultimately I'm not trying to fuck you. I'm trying to get to know you. Right, okay. What if I put this good dick on you, bitch, and you a problem? So I'm trying to get to know you. I ain't trying to have no problem. Right. Good dick call problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm in the good dick nigga benefits clique. So I'm the good dick nigga benefits. So I know I, come, I cause problems. If I take this dick at work, I'm going to have problems at work. So I got to get to know who I'm laying with because this go be a problem. Because right. I'm going to fuck you like I love you, but I don't love you. So if you don't go on dates with women, and you don't go on dates at all, and you, like, how do you start a relationship? Is it just because you, that you I'm guys married. Talk? I don't start no relationship. Right, but I'm saying, like, I how find you- out what you need and what you like, and I want to meet your needs and what you like. Mm-hmm. That way we can be friends forever. Okay. I don't want to get no feelings involved mm-hmm. because everybody who get feelings involved end up hating each other, falling out and breaking up. Okay, but if it. I say, hey, it's a benefit to fuck with me. I'm looking for this. Mm-hmm. Well, that's an even exchange, mm-hmm. right? It's some, so the other guy, you ain't going to get nothing. So if nothing else, while we fucking, you might get your bills paid. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying to myself, if you smart, if I take the pressure off rent for you six months to a year, little mama, you ought to be able to get ahead in life. So you ought to be stacking some money, saving some money, because most people would love to have this opportunity. Right. So uh, I'm trying to build something, uh, but a partnership, a, a, a business something. So in the process of, of, of us doing this, what if you got some business ideas I want to invest in? 
What if you got, what if, what if I find out you got some business idea and I want to say, man, let me invest into this. Man, now we can pull back from this fucking and not fall out. Now we can build. You know what I'm saying? Got it. Now if you want to keep fucking, just go in. Mm -hmm. Because I like new pussy. Your pussy go get old to me. Your pussy go get old to me, baby. So we got to have something else to keep me interested. Mm -hmm. If you got a real estate mind, you got a banking mind, what kind of mind you got? Because I'm fucking with your mind, too. Right. Remember I said I'm trying to get in your head. Right. So I'm fucking with your mind too because I don't want to be just fucking with you and I don't get nothing but some pussy. Mm -hmm. So if I'm giving you my money, I don't want to feel like I'm wasting my money. Right. So man, let me invest in you. Mm -hmm. Not just fuck on you. So I ain't just trying to fuck everything. Uh, man, I'm looking for some investments. Okay. That way we can be free and homie love of friends is what R. Kelly used to sing about it. Mm -hmm. They forgot about the homie love of friend. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the woman sitting on the back row while your wife sitting on the front row at the funeral and everybody wondering who she is and don't nobody know who she is mm -hmm. but she's dressed nice she's elegant yeah i saw that at all the old niggas funeral mm -hmm. see when the old man's in my village die his wife on the front row he got another woman over there he got another woman over there he got a woman everybody looking at that he knew yeah yeah so but uh uh i invest in people mm -hmm. uh, uh mainly girls i like has there ever been a time where you investing in a woman didn't go so well? Yeah. Uh yeah. Uh you 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 uh Wow, okay. Uh, I ain't had no worse hookup experience. Uh, not that I can think of. Okay. Well, then I think that that's a flex. Hold up. No, I take that back. Uh, I remember they used to have them motherfucking me. Uh, they used to have the prostitute magazines, them A&E magazines in the strip club, right? Mm -hmm. So when you leave out the strip club, you can grab your magazine and all the hoes that's selling pussy is on the back, is in the back of the magazine. It's long before back page in the internet. Uh, I grab one of them magazine, boy, and I go call one of them numbers, and they tell me to come over. And boy, the girl in the picture show up, and she say, hey, I'm gonna have my friend come do it. And boy, a friend come in, and she didn't look so good. Mm -hmm. But I still let her give me head. <laughs> but I post the fuck too, though, $150. But I come so quick on the head, they didn't want to let me fuck. So I'm thinking you're supposed to get 30 minutes. That's what the ass is. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm thinking you're supposed to get your whole 30 minutes. I didn't know you're supposed to just nut and when you're done. Well, what if I nut in 30 seconds? Oh, well, sir. So you thought you got the full 30 no matter yeah. if you came or not. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> uh, I stood in that motherfucking room and said, I ain't going nowhere until I get my money back. Mm -hmm. And then they said, we're going to call our pimp. And so they called a pimp and some type of uh, mulatto mixed breed Arab looking motherfucker showed up. Uh, and I was willing to go to jail to call the police and say, I was buying pussy and shut this whole motherfucking operation down if y'all don't give my goddamn money back. <laughs> and he said, well, how about half? I said, good, give me half back. Get on up out there, motherfucker. So that was the worst I had. Wow. So that's why I, I, don't, I don't, yeah, that's why I'd rather mack up on the pussy than try to just directly buy it from a hoe. If you could be invisible, what would be the first thing that you would do? Go to a woman's prison. <laughs> Yeah, 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 go to a woman's prison. Why? I mean, I always want to know what go on in a woman's prison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I always want to know. Yeah, yeah, I want to know which guard in that motherfucking prison get to fuck any woman he want. Because I know there's one in there. Do you think that really goes on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Does that go on in the male prisons? Uh, I went to the, ju I was, I, I've never been to prison. Uh, you went to the juvie. I, uh, but they were doing it in juvie. Yeah, them niggas, uh, yeah, the, 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 so I went into the boys' home at 14. Uh, so we had so we had 12 to 21. So the youngest was 12, the oldest was 21. So when I got there at 14 in 1991, man, them guys that were 17 and 18 and 19 and 20 years old, they looked like grown men. Really? That was intimidating. Uh, and they, they looked at older. Uh, so so imagine LeBron James and them, uh, Kevin, Kevin Durant. Man, those was kids out of high school coming up here with grown folks. So uh, I, I grew up in that era of, of kids that look grown. Mm -hmm. 
but not me. I'm small now. Uh, uh, at times, I still, motherfuckers still try to card me. You got your me, I don't look that motherfucking young. So at 14, I really looked young. Uh, so it was hard for uh, them women in there uh, to give me some pussy. But boy, I sure wanted some. And I would go tell everybody they gave me some. So yeah, I wouldn't have kept it to myself. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was the kind of kid, a grown woman couldn't get no pussy too. I'm gonna tell my other friends. Uh, but it was some grown, older, mature guys. No, the boy, they, boy, I would say these women name, but boy, they were fucking like a motherfucker. Where would they go to uh, hook up? Back then, you didn't hear much of of of. It wasn't, it wasn't a lot of big stories of child molestation. So it was easy for a person to. It was easy for a man or a woman to come get the opposite sex of a kid and say, "Hey, I'm gonna go up to the office and we're gonna counsel." This uh, is in juvie. Or yeah, this this was this was just anywhere in society. So it, that's that's how it was so easy for R. Kelly to go up to the high schools and his music teacher allowed him to have access to the young girls. It, it was nothing for if 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 I was a guy like R. Kelly and I want to go volunteer at the school and I say, hey, I, I, me and her, I'm gonna go take her and show her how to play our piano. No one thought, well, man, me gonna go molest that girl. If it happened today, yeah, but you're talking 30, 30 years ago. So it was easy for uh, these type of inappropriate relationships to go on. Uh, for one, it wasn't many cameras. It was unheard of to have cameras everywhere back then. Mm -hmm. So in these facilities, a lot of places didn't even have cameras. So it was very easy. Uh, and then you have to think, uh, we're the bad boys, right? So there's an attraction uh, to some of these guys. And some, and, and some of these guys were way more mature then during their age, based off the environment they came from, the things that they were exposed to, uh, I was a kid who was sheltered, so I really didn't get exposed to 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 the to, to the the criminality shit till I got into the boys' home and right. got around other juvenile delinquents. So I would have to run away from home and stay gone two or three days uh, to be really exposed to it uh, because I didn't grow up in the hood. Uh, unlike my my friends, they was they was directly in it. So uh, they were way more advanced. Uh, at 14 years old, I was still saying yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am to my mom friends. I wouldn't even know what to say to a grown woman to try to fuck her at 14 years old. She would have to molest me. Uh, but yeah, at 14, I wouldn't have known what to say. But it was some guys, 14, 15, 6, they knew what to say. And she, they were fucking. It was a guy by the name of Quincy Starks. Quincy Starks, light skinned nigga out of Dallas. Man, he was fucking all the guards. Yeah, he fucking all the guard. This one guy, but yeah, he yeah. It, the 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 prison guards used to hate this kid because he would fuck all the staff members. Really? Yeah, Quincy Starks. They called him Nike out of Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did would he be the one initiating? I don't know, man. Don't I, don't, know I don't know. I man, I don't know. Maybe he had a 13 inch dick. They seen, but he every dorm he went to, he was fucking the staff member. And he was fucking the nurses too. So yeah, I always wanted me out of thinking, why he getting it? And ain't nobody else getting it. But yeah, they, yeah, he he was notorious for fucking a staff member. And you think that that's probably happening in the women's prison, the older women's oh, prison? Oh, most definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. That's why you uh, would want to go uh, there? Yeah, yeah, that's why I want to go there. Mm -hmm. I really would want to work in a woman's prison. You would? I would like to be the warden. And all of them would be my hoes. And I would take <laughs> good care of all my hoes at that prison. I would make sure to go out, treat them right. Uh, and whenever, you know, I got drunk and want to come in late on the weekend, I come in and pull one of my holes out. It, it seems like you've thought about this before. I've seen it in the movie. That's why I'm thinking. Yeah, I've seen okay. it. In it. I, and it was a true story movie, too. Right. Uh, the Brat played in it. Uh, 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 old Girl Alpha Martin played in it. Yeah, I've seen the movie. Like, and it was a true story. Uh, Clifton Powell played in it. He was, the, he, was the, he was the guard that was doing all this. And he would get drunk and bring the other prison buddies in mm -hmm. and have them hoes come down there and fuck them. Yeah, they were freaking them hoes. Hey. Ideal life as a prison guard. What is the worst thing that you've overlooked because you wanted to hook up with a woman? Them two goddamn kids. She had them two motherfucking babies. Two newborn babies. Yeah, they were star -step. Uh, One and two. Oh, they were young. Man, I think, I think shit, I think, uh, 
I think Trey might have been nine months and little Troy might have been. So I come in, yeah, yeah, I yeah, overlooking them two babies. And my mama like, son, she got some, these are new infant babies. So I mean it's 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 a man still around. Uh and it was and it was her husband. Uh yeah, I ended up getting beat up by him. Yeah, he was a big old nigga I had a fight with. Uh yeah, because I was, I was sleeping with his wife. He caught me at the house. And, he uh, caught you? I wanted to fight. All I had, yeah, 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 I wanted to fight. I thought I was tough. I used to think I was tough. So what happened? Did you guys fight? Uh uh, I took a ass whoop. You did? Yeah. And I stopped thinking I was tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought I could whoop that big nigga. Yeah, yeah, I stopped thinking I was tough. Uh, when he was walking toward me and we were getting ready to fight, uh, my pants fell down around my ankles. And I fell back and tripped. And he grabbed me by my leg. <laughs> he got on top of me. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. I realized I wasn't tough no more. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I was wrong, uh, because he he really was a he really was a good good dude to her. Uh, she was young, he was older. Uh, you know he was a uh, he was a big time dope boy. Uh, yeah yeah yeah. So you know, uh, and me and her messed around for a long time while they were married. So I was a part of their marriage, mm -hmm. and so uh, she ended up getting pregnant. This after me and him had that fight. So uh, she ended up getting pregnant, not knowing who the kids were. And she uh, she had, she had was having twins. Well, there's seven sets of twins on my dad's side of the family. So there's literally seven sets of twins on my dad's side of the family. Wow. So I just know, that, so yeah, so. Uh, so were you worried? Uh, no, I, I was actually happy because I was in my early 20s. Uh -huh. And so you, you want to be a father out of stupidity and ignorance. Right. Uh, not knowing I couldn't, I couldn't even financially take care of the two kids at that time, but I wanted to be. Uh, uh, that puppy love, right? So me and her really in, in, in love with each other, but she's married to an older guy. Mm -hmm. uh, so for the first year, uh, she and I thought the children were mine. So she told her husband that they were my children. Uh, he, he ended up going to prison. So while he was in prison, uh, I was playing baby daddy. Uh, I ended up going to boot camp. Uh, I got caught with 10 pounds of weed and I ended up going to boot camp. So when I got out of boot camp, uh, her, her and our relationship had, had strained over time. And uh, I went and put child support on myself and took a blood test and found out that they weren't mine. How were you feeling when that happened? Uh, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, was, it, it was a heartbreaking feeling, uh, but just to, it, it, it was heartbreaking. Uh, because you, I had developed uh, an emotional attachment and bond over a year. I think my mother then were more devastated because they had bonded with him while I was in boot camp. Right. Uh, uh, her and I ended up becoming great friends behind that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we still friends to this day. Uh, uh, as painful as it was, uh, I walked out of those kids' life uh, only to reunite back with them when they got grown. Uh, like teenage age, uh, and only to end up becoming best friends with their daddy, who I had to fight with. Really? So yeah. you're friends with him now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We became, we ended up becoming best friends. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow, that story definitely took a turn. Uh, we all was young. Mm -hmm. We all was young. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, I, I wouldn't sleep with a man's wife today. Right. Uh, yeah. When see, he was a dope boy. So when he go to jail, I would drive his cars. Uh, yeah, his, so so this was this real disrespectful to do in, in, in your city, and he got a family. He's well known. Uh, so I was a little disrespectful, little nigga, fucking with his wife. So uh, yeah, yeah, he should. Yeah, he had every right to want to kill a nigga. Mm. Yeah, nigga doing yeah. So uh, uh, so when we had that fight, uh, I went to their house. So I was I was wrong. Uh, uh, I it took me a long time to understand uh, what a man is with principles and morals. Right. Uh, and, and, and your principles and your morals, they're centered around what you value. Uh, so I had to learn a new value system mm -hmm. uh, because I was a selfish, entitled, spoiled kid. So I, I never learned, uh, your selfish children are, 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 are yeah, they, 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 they something different. Uh, they had you have to learn empathy so it, it right. took me some years to learn to be an empathetic human being right 
Well, I definitely think that you are now, so. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I've grown. What is the weirdest crush that you've ever had? Uh, Miss Lopez. <laughs> Boy, Miss Lopez in the boys' home. Uh, I've been having a crush on her since I first seen her in 1992. Little short, big head Mexican with a big old booty. Uh, well, I was fit to say something I ain't had no business saying. But uh, that was my childhood crush in the boys' home. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when I got out at 21, uh, I got to see Miss Lopez. Uh, you got to see her how? Uh, she was in the city. Okay. And uh, I can't say nothing. I can't say, but she was in the city. And uh, we ended up spending the night together. Really? Yeah, in, in a hotel. Uh, and uh, I didn't know how to try to fuck. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to try to fuck. Did I didn't you? even know what to say. So just think, I got locked up at 14. I got out at 21. Right. I see Miss Lopez around 21, 22. I really don't even know how to talk to girls. Right. So I, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't know what to say. So what did you say to her? Uh, I just slept in the bed and didn't touch her. But how did you get her to the bed in the first place? I, I, uh, she 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 came to see one of my homeboys. Okay. Uh, yeah, she just came to see one of my homeboys. Okay, but she ended up leaving with you. She had a hotel. Uh, she know all of us, right? Mm -hmm. She know all of us. So she had a hotel that was staying in Dallas. Because I got a crush on her and been having a crush on her. Uh, man, I'm just like. This is like a nigga meeting Halle Berry or Beyonce and finally get his chance. Uh, obviously, she must like me. I got to go back to the room with her. Mm -hmm. If she didn't say, come on, get in this pussy, I didn't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to ask for no pussy. Most young boys don't know how to ask for pussy. If we like a girl, we don't know how to say, hey, I will, if I don't say, if you, it, it, you got initiated. Mm -hmm. Or I got initiated. So that's why most guys try to pull the pants down without asking or she hold on to them. We try to do, we don't know how. Nope, so I ain't know how. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, one of my biggest regrets in life, I ain't get to fuck Miss Lopez. You never tried to redeem yourself? Uh, it, it was unheard of for, for a kid to grow up and, and fuck a woman he had a crush on that was grown. Right. That was, that, it ain't like now. So, right. you know, in my mind, uh, it's just like if one of your mother friends was bad and she tried to fuck when you got grown. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, I, I ain't know. I'm no, still a kid. Yeah, I'm still, yeah, I'm still just Miss Lopez. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this Miss Lopez. Mm -hmm. But if she come back now, she get her motherfucking ass broke in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what to say and what to do and how to do it. And how, yeah, yeah, I know now. I'm an expert now. So Miss Lopez, if you're watching this? She, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you were on Cam Newton's podcast recently, you were talking a lot about how your passion is to make a change in your community. Tell me about some of the changes that you've made and some that you're hoping to make. Uh, I probably one of the first people that I knew of uh, that brought a nutritional program uh, directly across the street uh, to the projects. Uh, and, I, and, and I didn't get any funding for it. So I, I would wake up for the whole summer uh, and feed the hood. Uh, breakfast and lunch. The kids, though, oh. and, and, and the grown folks could come over and get some food. And so I, I, I would break the federal guidelines rules for the nutrition program. They're not supposed to be able to take food home. I'm supposed to throw it away. So y'all want me to throw this food away and them kids go come back later on the day? Nah, I'm going to keep it and they can walk and take it home. So uh, I, I changed I, I change, I, I change the mindset uh of the young people in, in our hoods uh, from coming and, and asking and, and begging for money, mm -hmm. right? So I would tell them niggas, uh, come ask me for some work. Do I have some work? And if nothing else, I'll have y'all pick up cigarette butts and pay you for it. Learn to work. Don't be no bigger. Don't be so uh, I, I would change those mindsets. Uh, in the juvenile system, uh, I noticed from being in juvenile that a, a lot of kids don't get visits. 
uh, most kids have white volunteers and they be older white people who come to volunteer to do this. And so uh, I got a lot of visits. So when I grew up and started working with children uh, and I became a volunteer, um, I started being a keynote speakers uh, at the Texas Juvenile Justice Department volunteer banquets for the families and the volunteers. And, and, and part, part of my message to the volunteers is, uh, don't let your lack of blackness stop you from connecting with a black kid. Because most of the volunteers are old white people and they believe in God, they believe in Christ, and so they're doing their volunteer services. And so they feel inadequate because they feel like they can't connect and understand because of the color of this kid. And so uh, for years, my message was connect to the child, not the color of the child. So if you're, if you're a white man and you're volunteering to go visit a black kid, you know what it's like to be a boy. So uh, look at the noun and not the adjective. And so uh, uh, I became a, a, a pillar in, in the volunteer world for the Texas Juvenile Justice Department in, in teaching volunteers on how to connect with, with young black children. Uh, another thing that, that, that I'm mainly proud of is that we was able to get juvenile life without parole abolished in America uh, in 2016 uh, by way of going to the Supreme Court. Uh, and we submitted a Mika's brief. Uh, so I got with not just myself, but three, three other individuals who also served time for murder as children. So we partnered with uh, the Campaign Fair Sentencing for Youth, which is a lobbyist, a lobbying organization out of Washington, D.C. that has a that does a lot with youth legislation and also became a part of a national organ organization. It's called ICANN, I-C-A-N, Incarcerated Children's Advocacy Network. And so all of these people are now adults were children who had a life sentence as, as a kid. Uh, I'm one of the only ones that was a part of this organization that didn't have a life sentence. Right. Uh, and so I didn't know America would send, sentence a 12 year old to die in this country for something that they do as children, uh, knowing that the human brain doesn't develop so a child can change. Uh, so that's just some of the things that, that, that I've worked on. But mainly, uh, I think I've changed how uh, we look at the, the, the negative elements of our culture that we uh, promote and, 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 and uphold to be good. Mm -hmm. So if nothing else, I think I've destroyed that mindset to say, okay, y'all, we know this wrong. Right. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't set out to do this. Uh, I, I wanted to become the change that I wanted to see in the community, right? So if my house get broke into, I want somebody on my street to say, hey, man, you know Leroy and them did that. I want somebody to say, hey, Somebody's breaking into my neighbor's house. I want somebody to call the police. So I became that guy. Man, I called the police on you, nigga. Mm -hmm. Say, man, y'all. So I became the change that I wanted to see. Right. Uh, I want to snitch in the community. But what I want is, uh, I want a law-abiding citizen not to be called a snitch for reporting crime. You're only snitching if you're a criminal, telling on your crime buddies. But if you're reporting crime, you're not a snitch. If you're reporting child molestation, you're not a snitch. If you're reporting bullying, you're not a snitch. So I, I, wanted, I wanted to change that perspective. And, and, and I, I think I've done that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I've done that. What is something that you're most proud of that you've done this year? Uh, what is your biggest accomplishment this year? Accomplishment this year, yes. Uh, So I've been in two movies uh, that have propelled me uh, and, 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 and advanced me past the internet where people can see me more than just a, a, a internet character. Mm -hmm. uh, so the movie that I did with uh, NLE Chopper and, uh, and Kai and them, that's, that's one of my most proudest moments mm -hmm. uh, because uh, that was hard. Uh, those right. were long nights, long days. Uh, and 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 I got to be uh, among some peers who was somewhat leery about who I was based off the internet. Mm -hmm. So for them to, to see me in person uh, and we work together uh, and they embrace me, mm -hmm. uh, that was humbling. Right. 
that 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 was very humbling. So uh, that kind of that kind of softened me up a little bit. Right. So it's, it's, it, it 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 was it was hard to be to mm -hmm. be a villain after that. I love that. Uh, not that I not that I was seeking acceptance, but I got to be around Sukiana and, and see a real person. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to be around NLE Chopper and see uh, it's really a good kid. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So uh, so then we done an interview, and and. And this interview was before the Cam Newton interview, and I really think this is my best interview because he brought out the man without any, without any, anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 uh, he brought Charleston out to the world, and it's hard for me to go back in and and, and play the the villain right. because Charleston has been introduced to the world now uh, because of NLE Chop and Cam Newton. Uh, my other greatest accomplishment this year is a, a movie uh, producer Alex Stone put me in that his daughter wrote. Uh, me and Amaretta starred in this film together. Uh, and it's called We Out Here and it's about the Atlanta Freaknik. But I say it's a gay movie, right? So Charleston White's in a gay movie, but it's not a gay movie. Uh, I was chosen and selected to play this guy the star of the movie who hate gays based off the perception of what people see me as online as a guy who hate gays. Uh, I say, I'm, I'm a gay basher. So I would pick to play this part. The director of the movie is the same guy who directed uh, Denzel Washington movie Fences. So when we did the script reading, the director didn't want me to play the star role because he couldn't see that hate in me. He said I was too cool, laid back. Uh, the producer, Alex Stone, was set on me playing this part because they think I could bring that out, but I can't. It, it's no hate in my heart. Right. I was trying, mm -hmm. but I, I couldn't deliver. Right. So they switched my, so when, so when we started filming, they switched my roles. So I played this guy by the name of Chop who kind of fits me more. The guy at the freak Nick looking to holler at the girl, mess with the girl, and I'm telling my partner who hate the gay, man, why you worried about the gay? Nick, look at all these hoes out here, you tripping. But uh, it, it's a time, it, it's highlighting a time when it's talking about the Atlanta freak Nick, but the underlying tone is that the gays have migrated into Atlanta during this time as well. Mm -hmm. And the gangsters are saying, man, what are all these gay motherfuckers doing here around? So this gangster, Instead of him focusing on money and fucking with the women, he mad at this gay dude who disrespected him for trying to holler at a girl. So his whole thing is, the, when I get, I'm going to kill this motherfucker. And I'm the guy in the movie playing Charleston in real life. Say, man, come on, don't worry about the gay dude. So what, what, what I learned, uh, that I can't really play a villain. Mm -hmm. That's why I got to log off and come back. If you try to place me in this character, I, I, I can only, I can only, I can't, I can't describe it. Uh, but it taught me something. Uh, I don't hate gay people, cause when it was time to hate them, I couldn't do it, even pretending. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's something that we love about you is that you're real and you're genuine, and you know you're funny and just you're, you're a great package. So. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, so I was comfortable around this gay dude. Uh, I was comfortable on this set. Uh, it was almost like a little family. Oh, I love that. But prior to that, you couldn't have made me believe I would have done this. Right. If they would have told me the concept of this, I would have said, man, I ain't fit to be in that motherfucking movie. Right. Uh, I don't, I, I'm not homophobic. Uh, I'm ignorant to some things. Right. Yeah, I'm really ignorant. Uh, but in a good way. So I got gay cousins. I got a gay cousin. She thinks she look like a boy. Uh, I got gay girlfriends. Girls is, you know what I'm saying? So uh, how can I, so, so I'm saying how can I say I hate this, but love them and they this. Right. So, uh, so for four days, I examined that part of me. Yeah, yeah, I, I examined that part of me. Mm -hmm. So when I had to say something, uh, to the, to the saucy Santana dude, uh, I, I corrected myself and started addressing black women about gay men. I, 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 I didn't want to say nothing to gay men. Mm -hmm. 
Would you say that that's a big change in your character? Uh, I, 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 I've evolved, right? right? So I never wanted to bring Charleston to the internet. I wanted to be the villain. Uh, because for me to come to the internet makes me vulnerable. Right. Right? Uh, when I done that NLE Chopper interview and I done that Cam Newton, I brought Charleston to the internet. Mm -hmm. Those were two really great interviews. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to go back and, and, and bring the character out again. Would you say that you brought Charleston here today? Yeah, I, 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 I've been trying to sneak the character in, but you won't let me. I won't. Well, you, you, you asking, you, you drawing out the questions you asking me, bringing out me. Yeah, I'm trying to go in. Yeah, yeah, you bringing out me. So, uh, but it's a great interview though. Great question. So, yeah. So, Charleston, what is next for you? Oh, uh, I got a 2024 tour coming up. The Underground Railroad Comedy Tour. So, I, I headline it. And so, uh, we're, we're going through the passage of the Underground Railroad. Uh, I'll be here in March for the Film Festival Award. So I think we got nominated for a Film Festival Award for the movie we That's out amazing. here. That's amazing. Congratulations. Uh, uh, me and Aiden Ross is supposed to be hooking back up and, and, and streaming some shit together. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I got, a, I got a nice little deal on the table that's been, that's been offered. Uh, as well as partnering with a, uh, so I think this right here is gonna, this new partnership is gonna change me. Mm -hmm. uh, I ain't gonna be able to be funny no more uh, because I'm gonna have to get serious. So I'm partnering with a guy uh, on a national level who created a violence intervention program that has to do with paintballing. Uh, paintballing is a real sport. Right. Uh, it's an Olympic sport, but it's 92, 95% white people and they would love to have black children to be a part of, 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 of paintballing. Uh, it'll boom the sport, mm -hmm. right? Uh, most people are concerned about black children with guns because of the, the youth gun violence, the 50% the gun rate of African-Americans in this country. But on the flip side of that, our military soldiers and our police officers use paintballing for, for therapy, for post-traumatic stress disorder therapies. Mm -hmm. Trauma therapy. They use this for trauma therapy, and it's been proven to be helpful for soldiers and police officers. Well, there's a guy who created this ITF program for paintballing and realized that it's a great way to combat and deal with mental health issues. And so he has partnered with the mental health community. Uh, he has partnered with ESPN, uh, what's that, the XLF Games. And so they've created this new violence intervention program for inner city youth to create paintball teams. So they're gonna bring it to Florida, New York, Chicago, uh, Dallas, Atlanta, LA. So, so major cities. Uh, and the reason they, they, they had this idea because they were starting to ask questions about Chief Keith. When Chief Keith left Chicago, he left here from having charges of shooting at the police, being one of the most challenging young kids that we had seen in the industry to move to California. And we don't hear about no arrests, no nothing, no nothing. Well, a lot of that was contributed to him and, 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 and his friends left Chicago and they, they paintball for their trauma. Interesting, I didn't know that. They were paintballing for their trauma. So the, the, the mental health experts have gotten involved and said, this is great. For, 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 for therapy. So they've created this ITF program and I'm gonna be uh, a national spokesperson uh, to help push this program to black inner city youth. Uh, so uh, guys like Dirk, people from the O Block, uh, they'll be able to have their own paintball teams and hopefully that we can reduce gun violence by these different hoods, these different rappers all having paintball teams, mm -hmm. put the real guns down, pick up these paintballs, you get a real jersey for your team, you get your paintball cards, and you also will be attached to ESPN where you get sponsorships and you get paid just like an athlete do. That's amazing. Uh, as well as uh, it puts black children and, and black people on an international scale for the Olympics because paintball is also in the Olympics. Wow. So, uh, 
I think I think this is is a new innovative program uh, that's gonna change me, uh, where I can't be the character no more. Mm -hmm. I got to go back to being serious and working with and dealing with children that's, you know, dealing with trauma. Uh, I enjoy the character, uh, but my purpose is where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's where I'm headed. I love that so much. Well, thank you so much. I want to go back to the bus. This I want to go back to the bus. I want to be treated like the little retarded dude. I'm, I'm sorry, like the little man, but treat me like that too, though. Yeah, yeah, let me take my eye out, let it roll, and I look up under the bus. I found my eye. And the girls laugh, and their titties bounce and stuff and get hard. Now, I, I want to do that too. I jump on their laps and lay down, just like the little dude did. Mm -hmm. We can make it happen. Please, please. You down for real? Yeah, I ain't okay. that bullshit. And I brought some boxer drawers where I show my print and have my tank top tucked in. <laughs> We're going to make it happen. Let's make it happen. Sure. But thank you so much, Charles and White, for being on our couch confessions today. Well, this is different than the bus. This is it more is. professional. It's kind of like some Jimmy Kimmel, uh, yeah, yeah, Jimmy Fallon kind of shit. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I think y'all going to get a lot of advertising with this. Good, I like it. And I'm yeah. glad that you like it so you can come back again soon. Very professional. Uh, and y'all are very technical. So mm -hmm. uh, y'all going to go a long way. Thank you so much. Thank y'all. Thank you guys so much for 200K subscribers. Our next goal is 300K. Like and subscribe.